Hi, in this video, I'm going to be talking about hair loss from cancer treatment. First, I'll talk about what causes hair loss. Then I'll talk about the time frame, what to expect and how to deal with it emotionally. Everything I talk to you about in terms of emotions, I've learned from my own patients. loss from cancer treatment is one of the things people are most afraid about. I think understanding hair loss, what you can do to decrease it, what to expect can be really helpful. So first I'm going to talk about the different treatments associated with hair loss and I'll start with chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is the most common treatment associated with hair loss. Nearly every chemotherapy given for breast cancer in the curative setting, that is stages one, two, and three, will cause hair loss. Those regimens that don't cause hair loss will cause hair thinning. So this is important for you no matter what treatment you're getting. In advanced disease, many of our treatments don't cause hair loss, they can cause hair thinning. But in advanced breast cancer, eventually, you will most likely be treated with drugs that do cause hair loss. Chemotherapy works by affecting rapidly dividing cells. That's how it works. Cancer cells are dividing. Even the most sleepy cancers are dividing more commonly than normal cells. Chemotherapy interrupts the cell division in one of many places in where the cell divides. Unfortunately, hair cells are also dividing. Hair cells are dividing every single day. So it's these cells that are affected. So it's the very effectiveness of chemotherapy that causes hair loss. Targeted therapy like trastuzumab or Herceptin or pertuzumab or Pergetta does not cause hair loss. Usually you can start targeted therapy with chemotherapy. It's actually the chemotherapy that causes the hair loss. That means once you're done with chemotherapy, your hair will start to grow in. It's also possible, depending on which combination of medicines you get, that the first part of chemotherapy will cause hair loss and your hair will start to grow back during the second part of chemotherapy. You can learn more about this on our blog and also in your personalized Yerba report. Don't worry if the chemotherapy doesn't cause hair loss right away or if your hair starts growing in, it doesn't mean the chemotherapy is not working. I'm gonna repeat that. If your hair grows back in, it does not mean that the chemotherapy is not working. So we covered chemotherapy, which does cause hair loss, targeted therapy, which does not. Let's talk about radiation therapy. A lot of people think with radiation therapy for breast cancer that they're going to lose their hair. This is actually good news, you don't. Radiation therapy affects hair only where it goes. So radiation in breast cancer, in early stage breast cancer, stage zero, stages one, two, and three, goes to the breast and the neighboring lymph nodes. It does not cause hair loss. Only if you get radiation therapy to the head do you lose your hair on your head. So some people do need radiation therapy to their head, either because cancer is in their scalp or in the brain. If you get radiation therapy in that setting, you will have hair loss. The last thing I'm going to talk about is hormonal therapy. Hormonal therapy works by decreasing the ability of estrogen in your body to get to the cancer cells. While tamoxifen rarely causes hair loss, it can cause some hair thinning. We see that in a small proportion of people. The aromatase inhibitors, which actually decrease estrogen in your body, even after menopause, we still make estrogen in our body. And the aromatase inhibitors decrease that estrogen. Because of that, they are associated with some hair thinning. This can be really upsetting. Make sure you talk to your doctor about it. You might be a candidate to switch from an aromatase inhibitor to tamoxifen if it's upsetting. Next, I'm going to talk about the timing of hair loss, what you can expect if you get chemotherapy and you lose your hair, and ways to manage it. When you get chemotherapy, if the chemotherapy is likely to cause hair loss, what you'll see is that your hair will start to thin two to three weeks after your first treatment. It won't fall all the way out. What a lot of my patients do is if they have long hair, they'll cut it short before chemotherapy, sort of as a transition haircut. And then as their hair starts to fall out 
and it starts to be seen on the pillow or in the shower and that's upsetting, they actually will shave their head. That sounds really dramatic. But what I've learned is that actually gives you a sense of control. Instead of waking up every day wondering what's going to happen, when is it all going to come out, you can actually decide today is the day. Now this isn't the case for everybody. Some people want to hang on to every hair as long as they can and that's okay too. Everybody's different. In terms of coping with loss of hair, I recommend that everybody get a wig, even if you don't think you're going to wear it. Why is that? Well, this way you get to decide who knows you're going through chemotherapy. Let's say you just want to run to the pharmacy and get a medication, or you want to be on a Zoom call and you haven't told everybody who's going to see you, or you are a realtor, let's say, and you're going to be facing the public every day and you think, you know, I'm okay with a hat or a scarf. You don't actually know that. So get a wig when you still have your hair. That way it can be styled to look as much like the haircut you want to have. and You get to decide what your hair looks like. I also recommend that people consider scarves, a cap. You can even get a, a fringe made, like bangs made, that would fit inside a cap or a scarf. You can have a ponytail made if that's your style. There are a lot of things you can do. The American Cancer Society has a program called Look Good, Feel Better. And they have programs on how to wear a scarf. You can also go on YouTube. You can see how to wear your makeup because your eyes will really pop. They'll look beautiful as you wear a scarf if that's the way you decide to go. And knowing how to look as good as you can will help you feel as good as you can. Now, during chemotherapy, your hair most likely won't grow back, although some chemotherapy is associated with your hair regrowing, as I mentioned a moment ago. What you will find is that three months after the end of chemotherapy, your hair will be about this long. And if you've decided to go with a short style, a lot of people actually ditch the wig at that point. It's actually really nice to know three months after treatment, you're very likely to actually be able to get your hair cut around your ears or the bangs just to look as good as you can. Hormonal therapy hair loss is usually not severe enough that you would require a wig. So if you're not getting chemotherapy, I don't recommend people get a wig. What about the cost of a wig? A really nice wig can run you a lot of money. Your insurance may actually cover part of the wig. What you do is you take the receipt for the wig and a prescription from your medical team and send that into your insurance company. And that can be a way you can get payment for some of the cost of a wig. You may also find that there's a wig bank where people who spend a lot of money, thousands of dollars on their wig, have donated their wigs. And you can get some really beautiful wigs that way. So ask your medical team if they know of a wig bank in your area. If you want to learn more about your treatment options, visit your personalized report at yerba.com. You can also learn more about hair loss on our blog. I'm going to going to talk briefly about vanity. A lot of my patients will tell me I'm vain. That's why it bothers me that I'm losing my hair. It's actually not vanity. Your hair is part of who you are. It's part of your identity. Have you ever noticed on a movie that if somebody changes their hair, it's hard to necessarily remember who that character was? Our hair really says who we are. Losing your hair is one way in which your body is affected by treatment for breast cancer. You may have scars. Your body image is going to be affected. Different parts of you hurt that never hurt before. Losing your hair is really important. It's not vanity. It's really symbolic. And so I want you to take care of yourself and, and talk to yourself kindly. Do what you need to do to feel as good as you can. Now, a lot of people feel like being bold, and that's awesome too. I have patients and friends who've gone bald and they're making a statement that's your style, don't worry, this is great, you're, you're, you're being you. So it's just important to know this isn't vanity. This is really a very different thing from feeling vain about your appearance. A lot of people may say, I'll love you no matter what. Of course they will, that's not the point. It's how you feel about yourself. So be kind and compassionate to yourself. I'm sorry you're going through this, but I know you can do it and Keep following us. If you like this video, like and subscribe so more people can find it.